We are pleased to be joined by Barracuda forward Nick Merkley. Merks, first of all, thank you for the time, and how are things going? Thanks. Things are great. Uh, good weather today. I was sitting in the sun, so not, not too much to complain about. Man, you're used to this good weather nowadays. You were drafted by the Arizona Coyotes. You spent a handful of years within their organization. You played a lot in Tucson. It feels like Groundhog Day every single day there. The sun is out, and it's it's at minimum 80 degrees, and you get to the summer months, and you're, you're north of uh, – north of triple digits so so you're used to this weather how have you liked adjusting now though to a new city this is your first year in san jose how has that adjustment been for you yeah it's been good uh obviously a little more uh a little busier than tucson and and uh back home but uh loving the weather and and um in campbell here it's really nice uh that got the prune yard there and stuff so um yeah it's, it's been a great adjustment and um hasn't been too too uh hard what has the adjustment been like? You're through almost the entire season, so you're comfortable with your teammates now, but it wasn't the first time you had been traded. It wasn't the first time you had to walk into a new locker room, not really knowing any faces. So what has that been like going to a new organization, meeting your new teammates and kind of building those relationships? Yeah, I mean, it's always interesting to see kind of the team dynamic and stuff. And um, luckily it was good here and um, a lot of good guys, no, uh, no, uh, uh, bad, bad guys, I guess I would say. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it was good. It's, uh, came in pretty seamlessly and, um, thought I fit in well with the group and, um, yeah, we have a good locker room in there. You're a Calgary native. You're from Southeast Calgary. So that's a hockey hotbed. Canada, obviously as a whole, they have a huge passion for the sport. So it's not a surprise you got into hockey, but what was life like growing up in Calgary and, and what was your childhood like going through hockey and, and coming up through the ranks? Yeah, I mean, uh, we kind of, I played pretty much everything to start out, played lacrosse, uh, soccer, kind of all the sports, um, and then kind of picked hockey as my, as my go-to and, and just loved it right from the start. We have uh, two private lakes by our house, and um, so played hours and hours on end with uh, my brother and a couple buddies out there. Um, I'd say that's probably where all the skills started to come into play. And um, yeah, and then uh, kind of working, working up through the Southeast, I was in Lake Bonavista and then played uh, for the Buffaloes and Midget. And, um, yeah. And then got drafted and stuff into the dub. And um, so, yeah, it was, it was, it was a great, great life and pretty lucky to even get a chance to play. So do you still spend your off seasons in Calgary? It, it, do you enjoy going back home? I'm sure in the summer, but do you spend your off seasons there now as well? Yeah, pretty much the whole, whole uh, off seasons in Calgary. I like to get out to Kelowna for a couple of weeks or a month as well. Obviously that's not a bad place to play. I've been pretty fortunate so far. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I love Kelowna too. So um, hopefully one day I can end up there, but right now it's Calgary. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about Kelowna. I think I'll have to make a trip myself out there at some point. And what a great place to play your junior hockey. We'll get in a little bit into your career in the WHL, but I want to go all the way back to the start. You mentioned skating on the lakes, on the ponds, falling in love with the sport there. When was the first time you remember actually putting on the skates, the first time you laced them up, the first time you got on the ice? Uh, I honestly don't have that great of a memory, but uh, I think I was – my dad told me I was two, so it's, it's – I don't even think you have a good memory then. So it was, it was uh, I'm sure it was special. And um, I, I wasn't really picking anything else but hockey. My dad kind of got me right into it. So, um, yeah. I remember growing up playing hockey myself in California. I was the one kid in my school, basically me and my brothers, who played hockey. Now, when you grow up in Canada, it'd probably be weird if you didn't play hockey. So the fact that your dad got you into the sport, was that kind of a no-brainer that that happened and it's just something that naturally progresses with most kids in Canada? Yeah, for sure. And then the other aspect of it, you're kind of competing with all your buddies and can talk about all the hockey stuff at school and and. Yeah, it's pretty exciting that way. It's nice to have your teammates and your your uh, schoolmates as well. So um, I think that's pretty cool to to have and be around. So you mentioned playing a little bit of lacrosse. You played basically all sports until hockey took over on a full time basis. When was that point that kind of split in the road when you decided, you know, if I really want to pursue a hockey career, this is something that I, I want to do all year long? Yeah, there's a kind of a cutoff around 10 where you start playing spring hockey and you're playing kind of year round with the with uh 
different teams all the time in certain tournaments. So it's a, a round 10, pretty young. You got to make the decision, but um, it, it uh, worked out pretty good. So uh, hopefully I picked the right one. So you're from Calgary. There's obviously a WHL team in Calgary, big in Western Canada. Most kids want to play in that league when you're playing youth hockey. That's a huge step, and it's a big step in trying to make the NHL. When did the WHL come onto your radar, and when was that something that you wanted to pursue in a league that you wanted to play in? Yeah, I was pretty fortunate that my brother went through the process. He was drafted uh, high. He was third overall, highly touted, and uh, – Things didn't go great for him, so it was kind of like if EFL I was going to go to the WHL, we were kind of thinking about NCAA as well. So, um, But then Kelowna drafted me and the organization. Obviously, each organization is different in that league, and um, Kelowna was great. And um, Yeah, I can't say enough good things about it there. So if you had gone the collegiate route, the U.S. college route, would you have probably played in the B.C., the BCHL? Uh, the AJ. Probably. So you would have played in the AJ, I guess, because you're from one. Calgary. That makes sense. What were a few schools? I don't know if you ever got that far down the road, but what were a few U.S. schools that you had a little bit on your radar? Did you ever speak to any of those schools? Um, I know Penn State contacted uh, my agent or me, and uh, that was probably the only one. I I didn't really like, I don't, because I was like high pick in the WHL. A lot of, I don't think people think you're going to go that route. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously there's a bunch of top tier and it seems like a lot of fun from what I hear from the guys. So, um, yeah, I mean, either way, if you're a good player, you're going to make it. So, um, that's kind of how, how you have to look at it. You were taken in the top 10 of the 2012 WHL Bantam draft ninth overall by Kelowna. Now Kelowna is notoriously known as one of the best programs, one of the best teams in the WHL. They've pumped out NHL talent for years. Once you were selected in the top 10, knowing that you were going to be a high draft pick, and then the fact that you landed in Kelowna, which is, again is considered one, one of the best teams in, in all the WHL, was that a pretty easy decision once you were selected by Kelowna to make that decision, take your talents to the WHL? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we sat on it for, I mean, half the year there, but then I played, I played at 15 in the dub, so kind of that's when you make your decision. You're either... Once you play one game, you're, you're you're signing that contract and you're there for as long as. But I mean, it worked out great. So and and they were great. So um, yeah, it, you you make it around fifteen, I'd say. So for people in in California and in the states who are not familiar with Kelowna, describe it a little bit to us. Again, it's one of the one of the best areas in the WHO, one of the best franchises. Describe the town and why so many NHLers now make that their off season hub. Yeah, I mean. Uh, there's it's the valley there's a, a few lakes around there a bunch of hiking stuff uh lots of lots of boating tons of boating it's it's more like a big summer place like um pretty much everyone wants to go there in the summer and hang out and, um yeah and obviously also i think it helps now that there is nhl players there so more more and more young guys and other NHL players want to be on that ice time and, and, and kind of work out together and stuff. So it's kind of, I think it's attracting more and more people. So um, yeah. And, and just the city itself, uh, all the fans are great there and, and yeah, it's one of the best for sure. I'd say. Describe kind of the fan support there, what the environment is like on a game night uh, playing for the Rockets. Yeah, it was great every night. I mean, uh, pretty much packed barn every night. So um, get pretty fortunate with that as well. So you wore, when you were on the Kelowna Rockets, their color scheme is teal and red. So when you were traded to the Sharks, were you like, I, I know teal, I know what teal will look like on me. I think this will fit. Yeah, I, I, I remember Murph telling me that. He's like, oh, I'm sure you're used to this. So yeah, it worked out pretty good. It's pretty funny that uh, you go back to the roots. So you were drafted top 10 in the Bantam draft. When did the NHL get on your radar? Now, every kid I think in Canada and every kid growing up playing the sport wants to get to the highest level. They want to play in the NHL. But when did that kind of start becoming a reality for you? When did scouts start lurk, lurking around? And when did you realize, you know, maybe I have an opportunity to, to get to the highest level? Yeah, I mean, 16-year-old uh, year, I had a pretty good year and, and uh, got, like, as soon as you kind of hit that WHL, I think if you can produce at that level, 
you start thinking like this is the real deal I think well I think I had that confidence throughout the whole time and um it was nice to put up the numbers I did in the 16 year old year I played with great players as well that always helps and getting getting big opportunity when you're that young is hard in that league as well so um I was fortunate there and um I think just when I got that rookie of the year in the WHL that's when I really um started to talk like that 17 year old year you talk to scouts you go for dinners with them you you do a bunch of stuff it's kind of crazy actually to think about when you're going through it what was it like to win the rookie of the year your first season uh in the WHL you, you produced as you mentioned you were able to step right in be a difference maker but what was it like to earn a little bit of hardware after your first season yeah I mean it was one of the best feelings of my life I think obviously you you, you want to have the team success and you want those trophies the most but um to get recognized for that it was a great feeling and obviously wanted to continue that moving forward and um yeah it was it, it was nice to get a, at least a little acc accolade for for the hard work we're talking to nick merkley barracuda forward you were drafted in the first round by arizona in 2015 Getting drafted in the first round, I'm sure, was a, hum a huge thrill for you. Did you have any idea that Arizona was going to draft you? Were they one of the teams that you spoke to? And walk us through draft day. Where were you at? Who were you with when you found out? Were you at the draft? Were you able to go up on a stage? You know, what what, what was draft day like for you? Yeah, it was a pretty crazy day, actually. And, and I mean, uh, leading up to the draft uh, at the Combine, I talked to, I think, almost probably 30 teams, so all of them almost, and um so I didn't really have one I was like kind of leaning towards or had an idea of of for sure in mind but um draft with day was crazy I was sitting there sweating the whole time I was um obviously the last pick in the round so um me and my dad are getting nervous my mom and um, my agents text me like oh well you think these guys are gonna take take you then they wouldn't so it was it was it's uh definitely a fun experience but very stressful as well um obviously it, in the long run it's uh doesn't mean much and you just kind of get put with a team and then and then you got to prove yourself again so um but the whole day itself was amazing it was in florida too which wasn't bad got on some jet skis before and stuff so yeah it, it worked out pretty good and um yeah it was, it was uh definitely a fun day Jet skis before the draft. That sounds pretty <laughs> epic. You can't really beat Florida as a location either. Um, yeah. So, so you joined the Coyotes organization a couple of years later, and you had a, a little bit of adversity during your time. You suffered suffered a knee injury when you remember Tucson. Uh, in fact, it came against the Barracuda. Unfortunately, I, I, I remember the play pretty, pretty vividly. You got tied up, I think, with Jake Middleton in the corner, yeah. kind of a unintentional play, and unfortunately, had uh, pretty major consequences. Walk us through the whole process of dealing with the uh, injury, the adversity that came with that rehabbing and, and trying to get back to where you were prior to the injury. Yeah. I mean, uh, I did it in junior as well. I did it, uh, after my 17 year old year. So after I got drafted, I played about half the season and then tore it then, uh, tore my ACL with, uh, I was out for six months then. So that was tough being a young guy like that and all this pressure on you. Um, and then, but I signed throughout that process with AZ. So that was hopeful and um, kind of got through that one and then played a couple of years. And I was actually playing really well in Arizona and Tucson. Um, I, I was putting up decent numbers in the A and, and got my first NHL game. And then I came down and it happened. And obviously that's uh, to go through it again was the hardest part, just to, just to feel like you're out of that. You finally are healthy again. And they say after a knee injury or an ACL, they, it takes a year to feel fully back at your full like potential game. So I felt like I was finally feeling good again and then get hit again. But I mean, I think it made me stronger throughout the, throughout the whole process. And um, I, I went to Philadelphia and worked with a guy, a specialist there um, for rehab with Jake Middleton. Or sorry, Ch Ch Jacob Chikrin. So, um, yeah, it was good. I mean, we kind of pushed each other and he was going through the similar stuff. So, um, I mean, as the second time, it was definitely harder, but um, I think it makes you stronger in the long run. What do you make of Chikrin's career so far? He, he has uh, turned out to be quite the player. I know 
there's potential as we're, we're we may date this interview but potential he could be on the move and i know he's a big piece uh, that the coyotes are, are trying to get some assets for but uh being your friend being that he went through it what do you make of his career so far yeah i mean it's definitely nice to see that he's coming off that injury and and obviously last year he had 20 goals or something like that so um great to see him doing that well and um i knew he was working out with him and and skating with him a ton he was special so um yeah it's awesome to see him thriving up there when you're dealing with a knee injury and you mentioned that you injured your knee in junior first you did it again which has got to just be heartbreaking did you find the physical rehab the harder part of the mental side of it what was tougher for you oh i definitely say the mental i think it's harder to stick with it and um go every day and do kind of the exact same thing and almost not get any results but um obviously it's it's paid off and I've got some good opportunity in certain places so um it's yeah that like once I got back up to the NHL that was like the best feeling in the world kind of makes all your time worth it who was your idol as a kid growing up in Calgary was it somebody on the flames or maybe somebody else in the NHL who do you idolize growing up uh Bobby Orr actually my dad kind of got me into him um just kind of humble guy he seemed to do it all um go end to end all the time which isn't bad and um he seemed like he was so humble after he'd score he kind of put his head down and seemed almost embarrassed so um yeah a guy like that obviously want to have that same character and and um obviously ability to it but I don't know if that's you can get to that same level but um yeah definitely the character is what what you would look after did you ever think about playing D if Bobby Orr was uh, your idol or was it always forward? Uh, it was pretty much always forward. I always wanted to score. So um, my brother played a little D. He was kind of back and forth. So um, I think my dad got a little um, in on that. So You spoke about your brother a little bit. He played the Western League as well. You mentioned he was a high pick. Uh, didn't end up playing professional hockey. Went and played uh, the Canadian college route. Uh, your brother's name's Jay. I, I would imagine that you guys had a lot of competitive days and nights, whether it was on the pond or on the lake or even in the basement as uh, as it's often taken in the middle of winter. Uh, what was it like having an older brother that's really only a couple of years older than you and the competition that uh, kind of uplifted both of you guys? And I'm sure it made you guys better hockey players and you're able to play with each other. Always had somebody to play with. Yeah, I mean, it was great. Obviously, uh, pretty lucky. It's only two years apart. It would have been nice to be one year apart and play together once in a while, but um, definitely the the competition was there. And um, not so much me and him. We kind of, we'd always get our buddies involved and, and go at it with more so our buddies than each other. But um, yeah, obviously seeing him, he was probably my biggest idol growing up. It's just his success and how good he was. He was probably the best uh, minor hockey league player of, of his generation. So, um, yeah, he was, he was awesome to watch and kind of look after. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, just great role model for me to look up to. Watching him go to the WHL, did that only motivate you more to get to that level? Yeah, I'd say so for sure. I mean, uh, always a dream of mine. I'm all, I probably, I was always texting him and seeing how he's doing and, if he was loving it and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was exciting for me too, to obviously his biggest fan and it was awesome to get to see him out there. So. Well, I'm sure the role has somewhat flipped a little bit, given the fact that you're still playing. So are you guys in constant communication talking about your game? Does he critique you at all? Does he give you pointers or he just kind of uplift and support? Uh, a lot of uplift and support, but I definitely say, well, he usually communicates it through my parents. He'll, He'll watch, he watches all every game and um, usually I'll hear from my dad about if I'm not skating well or whatever it is. So um, through through my brother, he'll say, Jay says this and Jay says that. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of support and um, I'm pretty lucky to have him. So did you ever have a chance to play against him during your guys' time in the WHL? Yeah, we did play, actually. Uh, he was on Swift Current at the time, and I was on Kelowna. So. What was that like? Were you, were you talking at all, or was it pretty quiet? Uh, yeah, not too, too much. I mean, we kind of just left it as a – chalked it up as a competition, and, and obviously each team wanted to win. So I think we had a pretty strong team, too. So um, 
yeah, it, it was it was really cool though to play at that level, and my parents were super excited and and happy for us. So, which jersey did they choose to wear, or did they have the split jersey? That you <laughs> I think one each. I think what one is- each. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Fair enough. So, what other things do you like to do away from the ring? I know you golf a little bit, and being that you played in Arizona for for a while, that's no surprise. But uh, what what things do you like to do when you're not playing? Yeah, I golf a lot. I've I've started to. Uh, meditate a little actually and and just before bed and and um um kind of puts me to sleep uh i i like to sit by the pool i mean uh sit by the pool and read a bit um reading a couple books right now um other than that there's not too too much going on obviously it's a heavy heavy load this season so um trying to think what else there might be I bike a lot in the summers. Um, I like to get my, it's kind of like a hybrid bike I, just on the road and it can go on the gravel and stuff, but it's not like downhill or anything like that. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, not too, too much travel around a bit. Um, yeah. What type of books are you reading? Is there a certain genre that you tend to, uh, tend to lean towards? Um, I'm reading Jordan Peterson's 12 rules of life right now. It's kind of more psychology um and then matthew mcconaughey's uh biography green light would you, rec- would you recommend both of those books oh definitely for sure so what, what about his books really good so what about what about reading kind of because hockey in general it, it's an intense grind for for seven or eight months it, it takes uber focus and you mentioned a little bit of meditation we can jump into that too but what about reading kind of cools and calms the mind and, and allows you to maybe think about other things aside from the game yeah I think um early on in my career I kind of didn't have too many hobbies going on and um just all hockey kind of thinking about hockey 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 so um you kind of learn as you get older you got to have some things going on especially when things aren't going well or your way so um yeah it's it's, it's uh nice to get away and kind of calm down and Obviously, it's nice to learn, learn a little something as well, because obviously I didn't go to school for, well, I got my high school, but didn't go to uh, college or university. So, um, yeah, and I, I've kind of been looking into um, maybe taking a course or something, trying to get um, that going as well. So what type of things interest you? I know I'll ask guys about if they did go to college, Raul, what their majors their major was and what interests them. So. I know you're all hockey all the time. You're right in the middle of your career, but what are some things that have piqued your interest that have have gotten you maybe inspired away from the sport? Um, I definitely say uh, real estate is definitely one of my big ones. Um, um, Other than that, I I think I would just probably go into a business kind of uh, major and then kind of figure out what I like and don't like. And then, kind of go with that as I as I go through school I think a lot of people do that as well as talking to my buddies and stuff they uh kind of figure it out as they go get into just general stuff at the start and then kind of weed their way through hey, you find out what you like that's uh when you go through the school process they put you through general studies and although it's painful it gives you the opportunity to kind of find what what interests you and what it is maybe uh going to be something that you'd want to do beyond just the, the basic classes yeah. uh, talking about the meditation stuff that that interests me a little bit and the fact you know the books and all that stuff you know we're all trying to find an outlet of some sort what have you found about meditation that has been effective for you um honestly i do have uh trouble sleeping and kind of overthinking and stuff and a little anxiety just over over uh yeah almost just thinking all the time can't get to bed and stuff so i just kind of looked into it and I just got this app on my phone, free meditation. So um, I just literally recently started this month. So, um, but it's been great. Like it's putting me right to bed. So um, just kind of intrigued and and just relaxing the body and and kind of um, calming down for a bit. Well, it's, you say that you, you're thinking all the time, maybe a little bit of anxiety. Now there's so much stress that goes into everybody's career. And as a professional hockey player, You've got things to think about all the time, but I see you as a player, a player that plays at a high pace. I've heard people describe your game as, as almost a dog on a bone 
you're going to hunt pucks, you're going to play hard, you're going to throw the body. On top of that, you've got skill, and that's what's made you a really effective player. What when when did you build that part of your game? Has that always been something that just patented your game? Is just being a guy that has a good motor, is going to play hard, and it's going to be hard to play against too. Yeah, I mean, uh, my dad's always preached that from the start of hockey. Obviously, be the hardest worker on the ice every night. And I think that does help my skill level, like my skill game, and and more time with the puck is always better. So, I mean, if you finish hits and have a good stick, and or a lot of guys can make plays with with no time or with a ton of time. So, if you give them less time, it's uh, um, they're gonna make mistakes. So, I think that's the biggest thing is just. Um, when you do work that hard and finish checks, you, you get more opportunity to use your skill and, and to use those attributes you've worked on. You were able to represent Canada at the Holinka tournament when you were still in junior. You rocked the red and black representing your country. For people who are, first of all, not familiar with that tournament, if you will describe it for us, but also what was it like to be able to represent your country? Yeah, it was, uh, it's a tournament in Czech Republic, I think it is. and. Uh, it was amazing. Obviously, a uh, ton of good players uh, trying out for that team. It's kind of, I think it's in the middle of summer. Um, it's, 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 it was a great experience. We kind of had a powerhouse of a team. Uh, yeah, like Marner, uh, Strom, all those guys. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I wasn't the top guy on that team, but I, uh, we just had so many good players and kind of, steamrolled I think almost everyone in that tournament so I don't think the U.S. sends their top team though usually to that tournament so um but yeah it was, a, it was an amazing experience to get some hardware and um yeah and to meet all those guys that's the biggest thing too is just a lot of guys that that are going through the same stuff you are who is the best player that you've ever played with you mentioned a guy like Marner an elite player in the NHL you've growing up with a lot of guys who have reached the highest level. You've played with a lot of good players in the WHL growing up in Calgary. Who has been the best player would you say that you've ever played with? Well, uh, I definitely have to go with uh, Dry Seidel when I was in Kelowna. Just his smarts and and uh, he's so big too. It helps him like have so much time with the puck. Uh, um, yeah, and he kind of takes over games when he wants to. Did you see this coming for Leon Dreisaitl that he would be, I know he's a top t- a top pick, but did you see him becoming this budding superstar in the NHL? I definitely knew he was good and thought he was easily the best in our league, but I, I didn't suspect. It's like, I mean, how could you really like what he's done is just outrageous. So um, yeah, he's just great guy as well. Like, uh, as a person, he's, he's, uh, I still talk to him once in a while and he's always positive and, and obviously a, a lower, uh, touted guy. It's nice to talk to those kind of guys and keep in touch with them. So I want to go back to your time in Arizona. You had the knee injury, you came back and then you end up getting traded to New Jersey. You're part of that Taylor Hall deal. So you get a fresh start and I'm sure it was maybe a bittersweet feeling, when you were traded, leaving the organization that drafted you, but going to Jersey, getting a new opportunity. Walk us through the trade, how you found out, and just the feelings of uh, finding out that it, it had gone down and you were part of the deal. Yeah, I mean, uh, kind of after my knee, knee injury, uh, uh, it wasn't great in, in Arizona and um, felt like I wasn't getting a ton of opportunity. So it was nice to get a, to get a new start in uh, Jersey and um obviously yeah when I got I got the call from John Chayka he said he got traded um didn't say for who but uh got traded and uh kind of just packed up all my stuff that day um had to put it all in my car and then they shipped my car there um and I flew I think the next day with Nate Schnarr to Syracuse and then they (laughs) took we took this limo to uh Binghamton and uh yeah. And then I, I, but I think the trade was awesome for me and it was nice to get that fresh start. I kind of started on the third line in bingo and then kind of worked my, they saw my skill and stuff and started playing with uh, Ben street and um, Brett Sini. And then kind of, we kind of split it up together and, and it was a lot of fun there actually, obviously so, not so- the same place as Tucson, but 
little um, different scene. Yeah, exactly. But what was it like to go to New Jersey and then you get an opportunity in the NHL, you score your first NHL goal. What was it like to, to bury your first National Hockey League goal and get that new opportunity and, and that fresh start as we talked about? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the best feelings in the world. You get, uh, you're waiting for this opportunity and then you finally get it and you seize it as well. So I think the biggest part is obviously when you get that little chance, because it's not going to be a long window, you have to kind of seize it and, and take it for all it is. And um, I felt like I did that the first time I played four games uh, and and I scored in my second and or I got an assist in my first, scored in my second and then played a couple after that. Uh, but yeah, it was it was just amazing feeling to to seize that opportunity. And my dad also was uh, it was a dad's trip I got called up for. So that worked out pretty good. And he got to see the first goal and everything. So it was it was pretty surreal moment for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's that's pretty epic right there. That mm -hmm. your dad happened to be at the, the game. What are the chances uh, that yeah. that happens and, and you end up getting your first? That's pretty awesome. Uh, last year, before the season started, you went over to Finland because of COVID. What was it like playing in Finland? I know you had some experience in Europe having went to the Czech Republic, but to play pro in Finland, what was that experience like? Yeah, it was, a, it was an all right experience. I mean, uh, I kind of knew I was leaving and stuff, um, but it was good. I mean, they treated me well there and, and uh, um, obviously there was COVID going on. So we just kind of sat around and didn't do too much and didn't get to explore. I think it would be a lot better if you went there knowing you were there for the whole year and kind of took it for what it was go to Helsinki go to do nice things I was in this little town Pori it's it's a nice like it was a nice city it's it's the fans were great when they were there and then the, the, they had to leave but um yeah it, it was a good experience for sure just to see what it's like over there and get 20 games in and I thought it got me ready for the season kind of I had a good training camp in New Jersey so I think it did pay off in the long run one more for you before we uh, let you go. You were traded from New Jersey to the Sharks this past summer. Another new fresh start for you. I know we talked about it a little bit, and it was something that you wanted to, to get done. You wanted to find another location to play. You've spent some time up, up top in the NHL with the Sharks and some time in the AHL with the Barracuda. But, again, another trade. What was uh, the feeling once that had gone through? And I know, as you mentioned, it was something you are kind of looking to have done. So um, it was probably exciting to come back out west, right? Yeah, for sure. I was really excited. Uh, obviously, um, was hoping for a good opportunity here. And um, I know that there was some young guys on this team. So I was hoping I could fight for a spot. Um, yeah, I was I was excited to I was very excited to come here. Well, it's been fun watching, man. It's it's been nice to not have you on the opposing side of things. So you <laughs> kind of tormented us for a couple of years when you're in Tucson. You guys had some really good teams. Now we've got yourself. We've got Lane Peterson on the yeah. team. It's like a reunion of the Roadrunners. But uh, it's been fun watching you play. I love your game. I love the way you compete. And uh, we wish you nothing but uh, the best of luck down the final stretch and, and as the team tries to get into the playoffs. All right. Thanks a lot, Noe.